A lot of people are aware that I'm rather distrustful of axioms, or I suppose I'm not really distrustful of axioms, but I'm distrustful of the effect that the careless use of axioms can have on our thinking. Um, axiomatically, intelligence exists, and axiomatically, we can um, measure it. IQ tests, that kind of thing. Uh, well, delightful people like J. Philippe Rushton have taken that axiom and pushed it to its nth degree and uh, thereby concluded that the races are intellectually unequal. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I suppose he's done a few dozen other things with axioms, i.e. Um, taken something that's more or less a descriptive race and treated it as an absolute rubbish, of course, but there you are. Some people can't be trusted to play with even provisional certainties, apparently. Um, David Benatar does the same thing with um, his alleged asymmetry, which isn't an asymmetry at all. Um, he uh, basically just says that uh, harm is absolutely bad. All right, well, it looks that way at first uh, glance, but, um, well, wait a minute. A little bit more nuanced than that. <clears throat> so again, another individual takes an axiom, pushes it to its nth degree, and uses it against the human race again. Um, you know, it's it's this idea of certainty that really seems to mangle the Western mind. Um, this idea of certainty that. Uh, doesn't allow any competition at all is the idea that underpins totalitarianism. A lot of people are telling me that, you know, maybe I overuse the term totalitarian and I'm accusing people of things that really is not warranted at all. Well, I don't know. Totalitarianism has to have an intellectual framework and intellectual, a totalitarian intellectual framework can do wonderful things with certainty. Which is why I am very chary or very sort of, I don't know, very suspicious of any kind of certainty for fear of what it's going to be used for. If you can actually split the universe, as we say, into good and evil, all kinds of things can then become possible. You take, say, an idea promulgated by a first century quietist Jewish uh, religious fanatic or revolutionary. You take what he said and push it to its nth degree and you get the Spanish Inquisition. I mean, uh, who wouldn't want to fight evil after all? Um, axioms are good, but I don't think that a lot of people know how to use them correctly. Uh, and again, our Western either-or kind of thinking doesn't exactly help in that regard. It um, tends to actually blind us, and it tends to actually, more than blind us if you ask me, it tends to rut our thinking to the point where people don't understand an idea without certainty. I sort of say, okay, well, our Western system of logic doesn't necessarily work, and people say, well, all, well, all right, if you're going to throw it away, what are you going to replace it with? I didn't say I was going to throw it away. What I was going to, what I, what I'm saying is, we shouldn't rely on it as absolutely as we have come to rely upon it. Um, you just get this cocksure sort of certainty that allows you to dismiss anything anyone else ever says, because of course our logical system seems to imply that a absolute truth is accessible and b absolute truth is expressible, accessible and expressible. Um, logic has that effect because it is based on language. Um, I think that it's that that's a massive oversimplification, and I think that it's the sort of oversimplification that can lead to, I suppose, laziness, and or at least carelessness, I suppose, which in turn leads to that rutted thinking, the kind of thinking that becomes self-satisfied and no longer sort of challenges itself. Um, some people have said recently that I make a, almost a fetish out of being deliberately vague and deliberately avoiding taking any position. This isn't true, of course. 
I take many positions over the course of my day. My positions vary from one day to the next because I'm a human being and we are inconsistent. That's the way that we are. A lot of people will say, oh, you're just making excuses. Excuses for what? Uh, excuses for being what I am? That doesn't really seem to make sense. And again, that kind of thing is a holdover from our Christian past. Or, in some cases, our Christian present. Um, making excuses by accepting oneself for being what one is? Well, possibly. But are we supposed to refuse to accept that which we are? Is that not making excuses to continually fight a battle that you know you can never actually win? Or, in Nietzsche's word, words, are you going to continue to pay down a debt that can never be paid off? I don't think so. Um, axioms are tools and axioms I want to keep on a very short leash. Once they start to stop doing what I want them to do, once they start to stop doing, once they stop doing what I want them to do, I'm going to pull in on that leash hard if necessary. Obey me, axioms, or I will discipline you. <laughs>